of all, let me welcome you to statics. I'm really glad to have you here. I think it's going to be a really good semester, and I hope that you find it to be very informative as we go along. I want to make sure that you know sort of how the course is set up and what you can do to succeed in statics as we go along. The first thing you're going to see all the way through is a sort of an emphasis from me on reading the book. And when I re mean reading the book, I mean actually reading the part that has the words in it, not just the part that has sort of the example problems. This is useful, but it's only one part. All of the principles we're going to talk about today are actually in this part, and that's something that you may not be used, used to doing. I don't think many of us, when we were in high school or even in the beginning of college, read the words in our physics books. Some, certainly, but not all. To help you sort of keep all of that straight, in your course pack you'll see sheets that look like this, where you've got a whole bunch of blanks for each of the sections. I call these course, course preparation sheets or um, skeleton notes sometimes. As you're going through the reading, this is to help us sort of communicate so that we're having a conversation about what I think is important and what you should be getting out of the reading. Because sometimes engineering textbooks can be a little bit sort of difficult to get the real point from. The principles of what you're reading are what we need to identify. Beyond that, you will get to, of course, the example problems. There are a lot of different ways to do this. You can work them yourself, which is better. You can watch me work them online. Those are in the live scribe videos where I'm actually, you can see my hand and you can listen to my voice as I work the problems. As you're doing this though, it's very important that you're gonna do some continuous sort of self-assessing. It's all very well and good to watch me work the problem, but are you gonna be able to work the problem? There's practice involved, of course. There's a, you've got online quizzes to help you. There's homework to do. Again, I wanna focus on this notion of can you summarize what you're doing and why? How do these principles play out in each of these particular example or practice problems? And then, of course, they're studying for the test. This is where people end up spending an awful lot of time when I wish they were spending a little bit more time up here. So I'm working a lot this semester on identifying what the principles are as you're going along. Now, I want to talk for just a minute about levels of learning. Um, there, this is from Bloom's Taxonomy, big into education theory. There are a lot of different ways of talking about what I mean when you learn something. Um, if you say, what is 2 plus 2, and you say 4, that's a fact. It's something you know. Comprehending why is a little bit of a more difficult situation. And then you get, can you then apply that knowledge to a new kind of problem? Beyond that, can you analyze a problem that you have and take it apart and find out what those principles are? And then can you put it back together again in a brand new situation? Can you, in fact, evaluate what you have left over? Can you prove me why? Can you defend your judgment? Much of early easy math and science problems courses live up here in this level of knowledge. This class lives sort of down in this, a little bit farther down this tree. Um, that surprises some students. Some of you have come from backgrounds which were extremely rigorous and you're not going to be taken off guard by anything I do this semester. But if, if you are in a situation where you just absolutely cruise through all your math and science before, I want to put you on your guard because sometimes it's a different kind of learning that I'm actually asking for. Sometimes not. That'll be up to you to figure out. Couple of hints. Don't skip the readings. That's where the principles are. I could talk from now until you were gray, and you wouldn't really want me to read you all of the book words in that book, so that's important. Make sure that this is a dialogue. The worst part here is that I tell you something and you file it away, but we're not actually talking to each other. Talk to your teammates, talk to your classmates, talk to a study group. Work with identifying what those principles are and how they apply to the problems. I have seen students who come in, and again, this may not apply to you, wonderful. I have seen students, whoever, however, who come in and all they're used to a situation where the teacher works a problem, your homework looks just like that, the test problem looks just like your homework and the problem I worked in class. What you will find, what you may find here, is that I'm going to work a problem and you're going to work a problem that doesn't look like it and the one on the test is a third kind and it doesn't look like it either. So what you need to have identified is what the principles are in each of these to the point where, in fact, they all start to look alike. And that's where we're trying to get by this semester. To do that, I want to come back to don't skip the readings. Um, falling behind is 
of course, always a challenge. Getting ahead is great, because then when other classes get in the way, you're not behind again. Um, organize, organization, of course. Oh, none of this is new. This is all stuff you already know. There are a lot of resources available for you here. There are the class notes online, and those have in them the LodgeFrag videos. They have these videos in many cases. There is a lot of material there for you to actually get through. The learning objectives are in there too, so that you can see what I think you should be able to do. Um, classroom capture, the, if you want to watch a whole hour and sort of see how the whole hour goes, you're welcome to do that. Textbook notes, classmates, don't forget the classmates. They're very helpful people. Your message boards are where we're going to communicate. Please don't email me. We're going to go back and forth on the message boards unless it's about grades or something really private. Um, I have online office hours. You have homework solutions. But this is not for you to just check and see that you did it right. It's for you to see how somebody else might have done something or to compare how different people think. There are extra problems if you need more practice. Um, and then there's a review site if you come in and you're already feeling like you're overwhelmed. So you, if you need trig help or vector addition help or that kind of thing, that's in the review site. Overall, what I want to sort of emphasize is there are a lot of ways to get help here and I'm going to do what I can to make sure that your learning experience is fantastic.